Good morning, Cyber Friend. This is Old Mitty Man coming back at you from Walker's Music. And uh, with another word for the day, uh, we give God all the glory, all the praise for life, health, and strength, for things being as well as it is. And uh, we want to say that to all the Cyber Friends, you know who you are. Mitty Man just come for a little wake up call here this morning. And as you see, uh, my video title is just one word reflections. People, I often sit and Sometimes I believe I, sometimes I might, I think sometimes I might spend too much time just sitting and reminiscing on things of the past. And I be thinking of good things and how I can better things in the present. And uh, I, will, I, will, I remember that in a history class when I was going to Berry College, a uh, history instructor named Dr. Higgins. And uh, he once said that we study history in order to keep from repeating uh, stupid things in the present and in the future. As he said, that's why we should study history. And to a degree, I, I can see exactly what Dr. Higgins was speaking on. But I just wanted to say that uh, I was reminiscing uh, this morning, and uh, matter, matter of fact, on my first piano teacher, and uh, her name was Connie. Well, actually, her name was Constance Hunt. That was her maiden name. And she later became Constance Rhodes. She married the head of the music department at Andrew College, where I attended my junior college years. And uh, she was my first piano teacher. That's the first, uh, that's my, I first took my first piano lessons on October 31st, 1981. I never will forget it. It was on a Saturday, 4 o'clock. Matter of fact, if you, if you don't think Mitty Man is telling it accurately, I dare you to go on your calendar, look backward, go back to 1981 and October the 31st, and I guarantee it's on a Saturday. And uh, I took my first lesson, and uh, I, I, was, I was real fond of my piano teacher. Uh, I listened to everything she said, everything. I, I don't care what it was. I was. She had my complete, total attention. And I never will forget some things that she taught me from the very beginning. I started learning out the, the older beginner piano library book by James Baston. I think that was, I think, I mean, it's been a long time. They've been over 30 some years, people. But nevertheless, I remember what she spoke to me and she nourished me coming up in my early, I could just say my infancy in, in, in music and in, in, in learning this here thing we call the piano. But at any rate, then when I, like I say, I started, that was in 1981. And then I went on to enter college that next year, the fall of 1982. In the fall, I entered Andrew College, where she was still one of my music instructors, and she continued to teach me uh, keyboard and piano, along with her husband. He was the head of the music department. He was the director of the music department, Dr. James Rowe. And... Uh, we had an awesome time there, Andrew, I must say. And then, in reflecting, I still think, remember the thing that she taught me in the early days. And uh, I still remember it like it was yesterday. Then I went on to Berry College from 84 to 88, four years more. Actually, I spent six years of formal education, two years at Andrew, four years at Berry. Double major, business and music. But at any rate, uh, my other piano instructor was Miss Faye Rao. And then she married, and her name, she got another name, her last name of Kessler. But now she became my piano instructor. And she was amazing also at the piano. And I never would forget, she always, no matter what, see, I started late in life of, uh, of playing the keyboard. I didn't start when I was four and five, like most kids. I was already out of high school before I started even touching the piano. And so, therefore, I wasn't on the level as the rest of the piano majors because they had been playing, like, all their life. I had just started. What, some two years earlier, I had just started playing. So, in other words, but I never will forget Miss Riles. She would never let me think lower myself. She always made me think higher myself. Not in a bad way, but she always let me knew 
that you, she said, look, Ernest, you is just as good as all the rest on your level. It's on your level. In other words, I was playing things actually in two years, which I shouldn't even been able to play at that time, but I was able to play it because I was very persistent and I did my work. And I really was crazy about Miss Ryle as well as my Connie. And I, I really missed both of them. I wished I knew where they were to this day that I could still be in kind of contact with them. Not only them, but my, my favorite theory, co composition instructor, Mr. Uh, Dr. Pelter. Dr. Pelter, I think now, is the head of the music department still at there. And Dr. Rosa and Connie, I don't know exactly where they are at, where they are at this here point in time. But nevertheless, life goes on. But you know, those are people that impacted your life. And those were just a few of the people that impacted me. I had many more, many more instructors that impact, made major impacts on my life. Uh, from Andrew Collins, like uh, Crispin and James Gilbert. Those were Dr. Uh, the president of the college at that time. Uh, uh, Dr. Greer and his wife and everybody. You know, I had a lot of people, a lot of influence. Karen Berman, she was a librarian. Where we all had, they had great impact on my life in the early stages. And so with all that being said, people, I didn't mean to go that route, but I, it was just like I was just letting you know about reflection. See, in this life, we don't know. We don't know where, 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 where we don't understand sometimes. I, say, I put it that way. We don't know where God has placed us at this particular time, but we all got purpose. And I want to read. And I, I got the reading here this morning, and uh, I got caught up in it. And... Uh, but I, I, wanted, I went to John 16. I went to John 16. The very first very verse, I'm going to start reading a little bit of that. And this, this is what it said. And I ain't got my little reading glass on, people, so bear with it. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. In other words, not made to stumble. That's what that means now, people. Listen at it. He said, they shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you, will think that they do it God's service. Uh-oh. Listen to that, people. Jesus said, they're going to put you out of the church. And those that are going to kill you are going to think that they do God's service. He said, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me, where goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you, in other words, let me see, can I turn the page here? All right. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Listen to what Jesus said. It is expedient. It mean, it mean expedient mean it is advantageous. In other words, it's to your advantage. It's to my advantage that Jesus go away. He said, it is that it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Satan is judged, people. Now, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. In other words, he was letting them know, you can't bear what I got to tell you. I got a lot of more stuff to tell you, but you can't bear it. People, unless you receive the power and the feeling of the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive all that God wants you to have from him. Now, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, there he is, is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Uh-oh, that is people. Remember, I have often spoken of when people get on TV, when they get on YouTube, or they get on Vimeo, or any of these other things, and when they glorify themselves and uplift themselves and try to make themselves look like something, they're in violation because, see, the Holy Spirit is going to only glorify Jesus. And guess what? When many man get on his camera and glorify himself and speak about everything but Jesus, 
let him go. Don't listen to little mini man no more because I'm not giving God the glory. The spirit only going to speak and only going to glorify Jesus. And therefore, whomsoever the spirit be in, and if he are using you, I don't care what kind of gift you got. You can be battle lights on a, on a poker, poker, poker pole. It don't mean nothing if you ain't giving God the glory. Amen. Now, I want to go, I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to skip ahead. He said, Jesus said here, in uh, verse 22, in 21, let's start there. He said, a woman, when she is in travail, meaning in birth, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she was delivered of the child, she remembered no more of the anguish or the pain for the joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now, therefore, have sorrow. But I will see you again. This is Jesus telling us this, people. I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy, no man take it from you. And in that day, listen to what he said. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily. I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it. People, what else do we have? May God have a blessing. Reading here in his word. Those words came from the master himself, Jesus. He said, anything that we ask the Father in his name, he will give it to you. Hmm. Wait a minute. Let's look at that. Anything. Well, anything last I checked, that meant anything. So, is there any among you sick? Anything. Sickness is anything. Is you got pain in your body like I do sometimes? And the knees and the, these old army knees and basketball knees and all that playing, jumping out the gym days. I was when I was young. I thought I was, could do all things and mess around. Then I'm now feeling the results of all that. But yet and still, acts. Jesus said anything. So guess what? That's the anything. Then we wonder why is it that we are still we still have suffering in the body of Christ. He said, we have not because we ask not. Jesus just told us, ask the Father in my name. Well, see, whatever we're going to do, whether in word or deed, we do all for what? The glory of God. So therefore now, if, uh, if I'm having a little pain, like I was this morning, these legs and stuff there, that gets next to me. But if I sit and remember, ask, and I turn it over, the pain goes away. But we're living in a fallen world, people. This world is cursed ever since Adam sinned. And guess what? It's still cursed. Therefore, a lot of things that are going on, it is not God's will. It was never Jesus' will for us to have sickness and death and none of this. That wasn't Jesus' will. He wanted us to be prosperous and be in good health. That's what John tells us. That was Jesus' original plan. But because we are living in a cursed world, and you know what? God gave us something that became a curse to us. I didn't say he gave us a curse. Remember, I said he gave us something that we turned it into a curse. It became a curse to us. You know what that was? Free will. That's what messed us up. God gave us free will. And we took that free will to obey Satan and disobey God. You see, God is not going to make us do anything. God serves the table. He, he, he prepares the table before us, but he's not going to make you eat. That cursed world that we live in, people, is, is the reason why we are yet having sickness and we are yet having these diseases because we are living in a cursed world. Now, Jesus came and redeemed us from the curse by the cross. So now, every believer have a right Listen to me, not good. Every believer have a right to not be sick anymore. Every believer have a right to not have any pain anymore. Jesus reversed the curse. He said, we are no longer under the curse. But then we say, well, Lord, what's the matter then? Why do I still have 
certain things. It's because of we are in a cursed world. And and being human, we fail we fail to, to measure up sometimes. But remember, if we can just remember this, and I'm talking about present company, I'm talking about many man too. If we can just remember who we are and catch hold to that, and catch hold to that word that we are more than conquerors, then we overcome. But when we let doubt and unbelief sink in, then we get what the world get too. I mean, remember, it's free will. Whatever you desire. See, God made us agents on this earth. He gave us dominion. We gave it to Satan. But Jesus came and reversed that thing, giving the dominion now back to the believer. But remember, we are still living in a what? Cursed world. That's how come Jesus prayed for us. Y'all remember that? Go to John 17. He prayed for us in this cursed world. He said, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of this world, but that you keep them from the sin or the evil one. Remember that, people. I don't made this video way longer than I intended to. But I'm just saying, whatever you get, I'm going to deal with some of this stuff tonight on Blog Talk. And we're going to deal with some more issues that I have been trying to bring up and uh, trying to encourage. I'm trying to encourage each and every one of you to just hang on. Just, 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 just hang in there. You're going to be persecuted. Remember, Jesus done told us that. But remember, Jesus had overcome the world. And because he overcome or have overcome, we shall overcome. Just stay in the race. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but those that stay in the race. Remember that, people. Mid man got to get him with this here keyboard. Now, so with that being said, Mid man, hope to see you all united at Blog Talk Radio, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, whatever you get, whatever you get into, if God is not in it, best you come out of it. This is Mid man saying peace and goodbye.